in the ground. Grounded. Grounded? What's that? I'm grounded in the I'm grounded in the ground. Well, hello there and welcome to Grounded Stories, a storytelling podcast created for our SECC education community. We hope that Grounded Stories will be a resource to provide a little fun and laughter, and of course, encouragement to stay grounded in Jesus in the ever-changing world that we live in. We're here because we believe that spiritual connection doesn't have to stop while we're all quarantined in our homes. In fact, it just means that we have to be a little more creative about how we connect with each other. Last week, we talked about how important it is to connect with God and recharge so that we can have the energy and inspiration to live for Him each day. This week, we're going to be considering the contagious power of encouragement. Being stuck at home can be very discouraging, especially when it means missing out on some special events like birthday parties, graduations, and other celebrations. Listen in as Lynn's uses her creativity to bring some encouragement to a friend. Oh my goodness! Why won't this thing work? I created this Zoom meeting last week. I sent out the meeting ID for all her friends, and now I can't even get into my own virtual meeting room. Ugh, sometimes I just want to throw this computer out the window. But then I hear Clay's voice in my brain. Lens, I can't believe you threw the computer out the window. Now how are we going to play our white noise sounds when we go to sleep? Ugh, password? Why do I need a password to enter my own meeting? Isn't that to keep Zoom bombers out? I mean, hey, I'm the one that created this meeting, come on now. Everyone else should have a password, not me. It's 2.30 and the party starts in 30 minutes. Ugh, this waiting room is probably busting at the seams. What if all the guests leave just because they get tired of waiting? Lens, the internet's going so slow. I think I need to reset the router. Let's see, where's that reset button again? Oh, oh, it's right here. Lens, are you okay? Every time you go slow-mo in real time, it really weirds me out. You know, I can just hear you if you speak in a normal voice. Clay, I'm stressing out over here. It's Sarah's surprise Zoom party in just 29 minutes now, and I can't even get into my own Zoom meeting. Uh, don't you use Zoom like every single day for work? Yes, but I've never actually been on this end where I'm making the meeting. I always just like click on the link to join the meetings my boss invites me to. Now I have to press all these crazy buttons over here, enter all these codes, do these secret handshake dances. Secret handshake dance? Are you sure you're logging into Zoom? I've never heard of any secret handshake dances on Zoom. Fine, Clay, why are you so literal? You know it's just my stress relief. I just, I'm just... Ugh, I'm just so worried that this won't turn out like I imagined it would. I don't think anything ever turns out quite like you imagined it will. It's interesting how we're so different. I have no issue signing into Zoom or creating meetings. My problem is what happens during the meetings. Uh, have you ever noticed how some people don't seem to understand Zoom etiquette? I know, right? They just don't seem to understand what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. Oh, like last weekend during our Zoom aerobics class? That one lady forgot to mute herself and the instructor was so busy doing all the moves that she couldn't get to her computer fast enough. Hey everyone, our next exercise is leg lifts. So go ahead and lay on your right side. We're gonna get that left leg up in the air nice and high, point those toes. I'll count you down for the last eight, seven, Six. I'm so glad this is on Zoom, so no one has to know how bad I am at aerobics. Two and one. Nice job. Now it's time for the other side. So go ahead and flip over. The other side? I can't even feel my other side right now. How does this lady expect me to do the other side? Oh, I might have forgot to mute you all, so double check, make sure you're muted before we go on. Thanks. Why did she say that? I can't hear anyone else talking besides her. Whoever's not muted is gonna feel pretty embarrassed later.
And one. Nice job. She must have been so embarrassed. The sad thing is I don't even think she realized everyone was hearing her commentary. Or what do you think about those people who wear masks during Zoom meetings? I mean, I'm pretty sure the reason we all have Zoom meetings is so people don't have to wear masks. I mean, we're all in different houses. Yeah, it's super hard to understand them. It's like, oh, I move to approve this motion for <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure that COVID-19 hasn't mutated into a computer virus. Yeah, that's for sure. Or what about that time that you walked into my Zoom screen doing your stress-relieving chicken dance wearing your pajamas? <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't know you were in a Zoom meeting, Clay! That's why I made you the Zoom meeting in progress sign to put out as a warning for me. I just knew something like that would happen sooner or later. Your colleagues probably think I'm crazy now. Why didn't you say something? First of all, they've always thought you're crazy. And second of all, I did. But you were singing along with your headphone karaoke tracks and you didn't hear me. Oh great, even better. So they heard me singing to my karaoke tracks? Okay, Linz, let's just focus. So why are you so stressed out about this surprise Zoom party? Clay, I just wanted to be perfect for Sarah. She was so sad and discouraged when I called her last week. Wait, you mean like Sarah, your childhood BFFL sister from a different mister, overstays her welcome during her annual visit from Florida, Sarah? Yes, that one. I just want this to be so perfect. You know, if you don't plan all these crazy parties, you'd probably not be so stressed out. Why do you have to do a surprise Zoom party for her anyways? Let me explain. So last week I called her. Hey girl, hey! Linz, is that you? Don't you have my name saved on your caller ID? Oh yeah, hey girl. How's it going in SoCal? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Still in the house, still working on the projects every day. Still trying to get Clay to create masks that can fit kazoos inside, you know, business as usual. Girl, you cray cray. So, how are you doing in Florida? Well, it was going well until I realized that I'd be stuck at home for my birthday. Oh yeah, I know, what a bummer. It's just like a week away, right? Yeah, my birthday is like my favorite day of the year. To get together with my crew and now I'm going to be all alone. I know, I was so bummed out. I had my plane ticket purchased and my suitcase packed one month in advance and then this whole COVID quarantine started. I tried to convince the airlines that this was essential travel, but they didn't seem to understand. It's okay, Linz. I knew you wouldn't miss it for anything. That is, except a worldwide pandemic of epic proportions. <laughs> oh girl, I'm so sorry. You must be totally bummed out. Bummed it doesn't even begin to explain my spiral into depression. Are you really feeling depressed? Yeah. This birthday was a big one for me, and I was really looking forward to it, but that's not all that's weighing me down. First, I got an email from my boss saying that due to all the cutbacks, I would not be working for the next three months. In the beginning, it was a nice break, but then I really started missing my friends from work, and I'm really having to dip into my savings since I'm not getting paid now. Then the church shut down, and I couldn't even see my friends there and go to worship. Then to make things worse, my internet stopped, and the internet company says there is a two-week wait time for a technician to come in. Not being able to celebrate my birthday is really the last straw. Wow, that's a lot. I am so sorry. I didn't even know you were going through so much. It's okay, everyone's going through a lot of stuff right now, and I'm happy to have a good health. Yeah, I totally get that. Life has been super crazy here. Wow. I never knew she was going through such a hard time. Now I see why you want to throw her this party. Is this somehow related to why you want me to make those ridiculous masks that can cover the mouths of kazoo players? Are kazoos even considered a legitimate instrument? First of all, these masks would be a blessing to all of humanity. Originally, I wanted to be Jesus' vocal cords and go around our neighborhood doing COVID kazoo caroling. But 
After talking to Sarah, I thought she could definitely use some uplifting kazoo music in her life. So I ordered her a kazoo quartet singing gram to show up at her door exactly 5 minutes and 23 seconds into our Zoom party so I could have it perfectly timed. Um, that's kind of amazing, I think. Yeah, but they said they couldn't do it because they couldn't play the kazoo with their masks on. Ah, this is all making sense now. I shipped the four masks and they texted me yesterday saying they received them and they're ready to go. Wow, that was perfect timing. I guess I should have made them a little earlier just to be on the safe side. It's fine, it's fine, but what is not fine is the timing right now. We only have 20 minutes and we still aren't able to get into our Zoom meeting. Okay, okay, take some deep breaths and I'll work my Zoom magic. You know, Linz, I don't think I tell you enough how much I appreciate the way you bend over backwards to encourage others. That's really something that you shine at. Aw, thanks, Clay. I felt especially inspired because right before I talked to Sarah that day, I read this story in the Bible about another person who was encouraging and how it made all the difference in the world. Really? Which story was it? You know, I work better while listening to a good story. It's found in 2 Kings 5. It went something like this. There was a really important man in the land of Aram. His name was Naaman. Hello there. He was actually the commander of the entire army of Aram. That's pretty important. I'm a pretty big deal. In fact, everywhere he went around the country, he was followed by trumpet fanfare. <laughs> That's clearly kazoo, not trumpet. And as I said, kazoos are not even real instruments. Clay, put on your imagination cap and hang tight. There's a lot more to this story. So Naaman was really important. He had a lot of servants, lots of animals, and a huge house. He would have been very well liked in his country. Things were pretty good for Naaman except for one thing. This one thing, however, was a very huge, crazy, crazy, crazy problem. He had a skin disease called leprosy. Oh yeah, there is that. And leprosy was a very serious sickness. It made people's skin look different. It made them lose the ability to feel things on their bodies. Usually, if you were to accidentally touch a fire while cooking, you would probably pull your hand back really quick, right? Right before you got burned? But people with leprosy might not even feel the burning pain and they could get really seriously injured. Wow, that's really terrible. Yes, but there's more. This disease was actually contagious. Huh? What does that mean? English is my second language. Oh, sorry. It means that leprosy could be passed on from one person to another. You mean like the coronavirus? Yes, well, uh, kind of. The fact that it's contagious is the one similarity that it has with the coronavirus. Scientists believe it can be passed on through droplets like COVID-19. It's caused by bacteria instead of a virus. And you have to be close to someone for quite a while to get leprosy. Is that why no one wants to hang out with me? Yep. Most people with leprosy were actually quarantined outside the city. They couldn't visit their friends and family members, and they couldn't even go to the temple to worship or go to any celebrations. It was really quite lonely for them. And there was one other very big detail about leprosy. Even though there are treatments for it nowadays, back in Naaman's time, there was no cure for it at all. No. Yep. Naaman was pretty much out of options. What am I going to do? I don't want to be quarantined all by myself. Please don't make me leave. I don't know what I'll do in that leprosy camp. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, there was a little voice that came from the other room. Um, excuse me. Did someone say something? Yes, it's me, over here. Everyone looked over to the doorway of the next room and saw the little servant girl peeping her head out of the doorway. What does she want? You see, servants weren't usually treated very well back then. She was actually a girl who was captured by soldiers who invaded Israel and given to Naaman's wife to be her servant. She had every reason to be angry and not nice to Naaman, but she was not your average kid. She loved God and wanted to serve him and help others. 
She mustered up her courage and said to Naaman's wife, I couldn't help but overhear you talking to Master Naaman about the sad news about him getting leprosy. He seemed so discouraged and hopeless. I wanted to encourage him with a little hope. You see, there's a really important person who lives in my country. He's close to God and is an important leader. We call him the Prophet Elisha. If only Master Naaman could go to Samaria, where the Prophet lives, I'm sure he would cure my master from his leprosy. What? But I thought leprosy was incurable. Well, that's true with humans, but the Prophet Elisha is connected with the God of Israel, and our God can do anything. Be encouraged, Master Naaman. There's hope for you. God cares, and he wants to help you. Why are you being so nice to me, and helping me after all that our country has done to you? I believe in the God of Israel, and he's been so good to me. I want you to know him too and how loving, powerful, and amazing he is. Because that servant girl encouraged Naaman, he actually traveled to meet Elisha and was completely healed from disease. And not only was he physically changed, he had a change of heart and became a follower of the God of Israel. That's amazing! And I can see how that inspired you to be encouraging to your friend Sarah. We're all quarantined like Naaman would have been if he wasn't healed. and. Sarah sure is discouraged, just like Naaman was. Yeah, exactly. And when others are discouraged, a little encouragement could go a long ways, I think. In Sarah's situation, we can't exactly find a cure for COVID-19, but we can encourage Sarah with our Kazoo Quartet singing gram and through this Zoom party. And speaking of the Zoom party, I think we're just about live. Yes! There are all of the 12 guests in the waiting room, including Sarah's boss. I got her in on this so she could tell Sarah that she had a work-related Zoom meeting to attend. Perfect. Let's admit everyone. Hey, everyone! Hey! hey. Thanks for being here. I think Sarah should be here any second. Oh, 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 here she comes. Hello? Surprise! Surprise. Surprise. What in the world is going on? You've probably noticed that this isn't a work Zoom meeting. It's your surprise Zoom birthday party! Surprise! surprise. Happy birthday! What? That is so awesome! I gotta take a selfie of all of you with me on the screen. And if they're Thanks, on time, friends. the Kazoo Quartet should be arriving at her door in three, two, one. Oh, that's funny. Someone's at the door. Just hold on a minute. That was amazing. Thanks, you all. Linz, is that why you were having Clay make all those kazoo masks? You really are cray cray, but you're also an amazing friend. Thanks for all of this, and thanks to all of you for coming to my birthday party. Seeing all of you here is exactly what I needed to brighten my day. Well, we're here because you mean the world to us, and we couldn't let the day pass by without letting you know. Happy hey. birthday! <laughs> Done. Leaving meeting. End meeting for all participants. Thank you so much for figuring all this out for me. No problem. It was actually really meaningful for me too. I started out feeling like, oh great, here goes Linz again on one of her other crazy party ideas. And then after hearing about the story of Naaman's servant girl who was so encouraging and seeing how much of a difference it made to Naaman, I was actually convinced that this was the right thing to do. But now, after seeing the encouragement that the Zoom party and don't forget about the Kazoo Quartet and how much the Kazoo Quartet brought to Sarah, I, I, well, I guess I'm actually more encouraged myself too. Yeah, it's kind of funny. We've been talking about all these diseases and how they're so contagious, but I have to say, I think encouragement is even more contagious. You're totally right. The story in the Bible encouraged you. You encouraged Sarah. But this Zoom party brought a lot of encouragement and joy to me, and I'm guessing to all the other guests as well. And. I'm pretty sure that Kazoo Quartet had a pretty fun time with their ridiculous looking masks. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess there's only one question left. What's that? Who do we want to infect next? Friends, do you know someone who's discouraged right now? Maybe someone didn't get to have a birthday party like Sarah. Or maybe a friend or family member is just feeling discouraged for other reasons. 
what could you do to bring some encouragement to that person? Could you help bring a solution to their problem like the little servant girl did for Naaman? Could you brighten up their day by doing something creative and fun like Linz did for Sarah? Or could you come up with a completely out of the box way to bring encouragement to their day? And just like Clay discovered, encouragement is actually super contagious. So if you're feeling discouraged yourself, bringing joy to someone else's day might be the perfect way to encourage yourself as well. Ready to take the challenge and encourage others? Well, last week, I'm sure many of you took the challenge to connect and recharge with God. One of you actually sent a message to share what you did. Let's listen in. Hi, my name is Rob Perez. I am eight years old. I am in second grade. I connect with God by reading the Bible. I feel connected by, to God because sometimes when I read the Bible, I find things that I never knew and they help me with in my walk with Christ. The first Bible verse that I ever learned that made me feel connected to God is Psalms 118.6. The Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. That is a good verse because right now when we're in the midst of this pandemic, we don't have to be afraid because God is with us. Thanks for listening to this episode of Grounded Stories and a special thanks for Rao for sharing what you do to connect with God. This week, if you're able to encourage someone else, I hope you'll record a message with your name, grade level, and what you did, and email it to ckoh at lla.org. That's ckoh at lla.org. This episode featured the voices of yours truly, Clayton Co., and my lovely wife, Lindsay, Miguel Serrano as Naaman, Jacqueline Klein as Sarah, Zeeland Kotsumpos as the servant girl, Gail Nelson as the Zoom aerobics instructor, and the 6th grade kindness ambassadors from Loma Linda Academy as our Zoom party guests. Grounded Stories is produced for the Southeastern California Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Office of Education. We hope that these stories will help to keep us all grounded as we live by faith in Jesus.